What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl, Keisha, and I'm here with the, my All Tea All Shade Married to Medicine Season 5, Episode 2 Review. So, on that episode, we see Dr. Jackie um, boxing. You know, she loves to stay fit. Heavily shows up to participate with her, and they get in the ring, and they play boxing. It was a really cute little fun scene. They talk about the waiting to exhale party and, you know, how Jackie felt about the whole entire thing and heavily asked her, can she just let loose? Like, can you just, like, just be wild and free for once? And Jackie says that she releases through quiet time and prayer and meditation and yoga. And I understand that is a release. But goddamn, Jackie is rigid. Like, and I'm not saying that that was part of the re that that gives Curtis carte blanche to cheat on her because if you weren't happy happy in your marriage you should have just left her. But I know it has to be hard being married to someone like Jackie. Jackie needs somebody that's just like her. I mean, because she's so rigid and it doesn't seem like she's a good lay at all. She looks like she just wants to do missionary. Doggy, like, probably is stretching it for her. Anal is probably just out of the question. She probably doesn't even like to get fellatio. It just seems like she's just not fun. She probably doesn't even listen to hip-hop music. It's probably just jazz and contemporary music and Z100. Like, it just seems like Jackie is boring as fuck. It seems like the only thing that makes her happy is her career. And I think that she would have been a great mother and all of that, but it seems like... Jesus Christ, it would be like just watching paint dry being married to her. Um, Heavily says that, you know, um, her coping skills are too right. Like, it's just too perfect and she needs to be more human. And I don't think that she needs to be more human. I just think that she needs to just like have fun. Like, just do something that is out of the normal for her and to stretch herself and stop staying into this little box that she's in. Um... Jackie asks her, is it possible that because she doesn't show emotion that Curtis believed that she didn't care? And that's a great question to ask. Jackie says it's possible, but that this is how she's been throughout their whole entire marriage. And one thing that you have to learn being in a relationship with someone or even being married to someone that just because you start out one way doesn't mean that it's okay to stay in that same place throughout the whole entire relationship. In a relationship, you have to grow. You do have to make changes in order to appease your spouse, in order to grow as a couple and as a person. So just because you start off that way don't mean that you can just say, well, I was this way when you married me. Certain things do need to be evolved and changed throughout a relationship if you're going to make it work. There has to be a give and take. So I don't think that... that just because she started off that way, that means that you have to stay that way. And that gives her excuse for her behavior. Once again, not saying that that gives him the right to cheat. Because if he was unhappy, he should have just left. Um, Heavily demonstrates how she would have went off when she found, if she would have found out uh, her husband cheated on her. It was really funny. Quad Skypes with her team. And if I'm not mistaken, one of her team members... The the Nika or the, the, whatever the chick name was is Evelyn Lozado's old publicist. If you watched her reality show on OWN, she's writing a cookbook called Romance on the Table. Really cute title. Um, Toya and Eugene go out to eat. They haven't had a long time in weeks because of his hectic uh, schedule. You know, they still trying to pay off the IRS man. And I'm still under not understanding like why is it taking them so long to pay off this little hundred thousand dollars. Like, you're on Bravo. I know your check ain't whack. Like, you could take her Bravo check to pay that shit off. I'm not understanding this. Anywho, um, she brings up their sex life, which has basically been non-existent. She says, um, he says, you know, you act like you don't even want to have sex most of the time. And she asks him, you know, well, how are you releasing being that you're, we're not even around each other as much as we used to be. And he says, you know, that he masturbates and, you know, he does it, you know, so it can last long, which is true. But I just didn't need to know that about that motherfucker. Because Eugene just looked like a tub of lard. Like, Eugene just does not turn me on at the fuck all. And he don't low-key turn her ass on me. That's why she don't be going to fuck. Um, you know who Eugene looked like? If you've ever seen Weird Science... <laughs> Weird science. Ooh, 
doom, 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 doom. Remember at the end when old boy brother Chet got turned into that blob? That's what Gregory looks like. Look it up. So, <laughs> so shady. Um, and Heavenly House, her badass Dora Laura is writing songs and shit. You know, she's trying to be the next Alicia Keys. Her um, daddy is into music also, and he plays uh, Laura some beats and everything. And Heavenly says she used to be a CEO of a record label. And even pro the production crew in her green screen had to laugh her ass. She's like, what y'all laughing at? I did used to have one. I mean, the motherfucker I had on my record label used to just drink and smoke all the time and never record nothing. So that's why the motherfucker fact that I used to be a CEO. And I'm like, Heavenly, set your retarded ass up. Heavenly is the comic relief, though. Heavenly works my nerves, but Heavenly funny as fuck. Um... So, Toya decides she wants to have, like, a little potluck thing for her birthday. She wants to have doctors versus non-doctors where it's a competition. Cute little idea. End up being really cute. Simone goes to her south house to see Cecil, and she got an attitude, honey. Um, she says that the dog get more attention to her, honey. They apparently had a fight the night before, and it was so bad that she slept at the north house. Cecil is worried about being laid off from work, so that's adding to their, you know, marital stresses. She says that their son sent her a text message asking if they were going to get a divorce because during the argument, I guess she brought up divorce again. She admits that in the past she has brought up divorce as a scare tactic, but here recently she honestly does mean it. That's how bad the marriage has gotten. And I'm like, oh, because I really like Simone and Cecil. Cecil. She feels like they're growing apart. And I was like, well, girl, if you feel like they're growing apart, um, why are you living in a separate house? Fuck you need to get closer to your job. Y'all all need to be underneath one roof laying in the bed with each other, honey. That's a part of the reason why y'all growing apart because y'all living like single folks. The fuck is wrong with y'all? How am I not married? I know more than most is married motherfuckers. Um, she doesn't like that he acts like a drill sergeant. And he says, you know... You always tell me my tone is fucked up. They didn't got to the point where I don't even like asking your ass questions because I'm feeling like you're going to take it some type of way. Um, they suggest getting counseling because they obviously need it. At Jackie's office, her nurse Tiffany comes in very distraught and shows Jackie an interview that Curtis Mistress recently did with Radar. Um, Jackie is stunned and humiliated by this because once again, this motherfucker's out here having her look like a whole goddamn fool that another bitch is out here talking about my husband to the press. Um, the mission said that, um, they've been fucking around for months, honey. Now, she didn't know he was married. And I was like, okay, now, you might not know he was married at first because, let's be honest, Curtis is not on covers of magazines. Like, he's not that nigga. So, you might not have known he was married in the beginning. But, bitch, your ass found out a day or two later, just like Heavenly said later on in the episode, when this motherfucker asking you to get hotel rooms in your name outside of his and... Uh, when he only seeing you at certain times of the day at night, bitch, you knew your ass was somebody's mistress, bitch. So, um, Curtis asked her to, to lie for him and, you know, she refused and Jackie tells her worker, you know, she's shaking, but she will not be moved. And I was like, you know, that's right, bitch. I would, bitch, you ain't getting that nail time on my goddamn day. I'm about to go see my patients and both of you niggas can have several. I love the way Jackie's handling it by not letting this bitch or this nigga rattle her. But that nigga got to pay. Curtis ass got to go. Because bet you, I bet you 100% if Jackie decides to divorce his ass, that motherfucker gonna pull a can do on her and ask for spousal support or some shit. Because you know this motherfucker ain't shit but a gym teacher. So how was you paying for them goddamn hotel rooms, huh, Curtis? On her dime? Because you know she make more money than her. So you using her money to take care of your mistress? Bitch, please. So it's the day of Toya's little dinner or whatever. And Eugene and Quad are team captains. They bring up the whole Jackie situation once again. And everybody says that, you know, no one has talked to Curtis. Heavenly shows up and Toy asks where Damon is. And Heavenly's like, that motherfucker at work. He ain't cheating. <laughs> Gregory says, when a man cheats, women aid the wife without knowing what led to the cheatation and that they aid the mistress. Now, See, I can agree with what he said to an extent, but it's still like, Eugene, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Because I do agree that sometimes motherfuckers just cheat because they just want to cheat. A bitch could be at home doing everything under the sun for a motherfucker and they just want to just do whatever the fuck they want to do. 
But there are cases as well where there are issues in the marriage that do lead up to said cheatation, where the wife is lacking in this part or not doing this and the husband is doing this and there's contention in the household or whatever. Say, for instance, like what Cecil and Simone are going through. But once again, I just feel like before you make that step as grown up as, and as an adult, you know what you're doing is wrong and you just need to step up and say, I'm not happy. We need to separate. I want to see other people be honest. I'd rather for you to be honest with me than to blindside me and do some shit that's going to hurt me 10 times worse. Um, Kwai said she will never defend a mistress. And I agree with that. I ain't defending no motherfucker unless you absolutely 100% did not know about me. Because I'll tell you some about motherfuckers. I know motherfuckers that were cheating your face and you won't even know the motherfucker cheating on your ass. I have a whole conversation with the bitch and make it seem like it's one of his partners. Girl, motherfuckers are slick as hell. Um, she also brings up that the girl didn't know he was married. Heavily disagrees and brings up, you know, the whole situation, you know, with the... Curtis asking her to get the room in their name and, you know, meeting up with the girl at certain times of the day and night or whatever. Kwai says if he never took up with the woman in the first place, there would be no conversation. I was like, hey, man, hallelujah. You better speak the truth to shame the devil. Gregory says how easy was it for him to take up with her? And I would see, Kwai, this was when with the North Kakalaka or wherever the fuck your ass came from should have came up out your goddamn chest to slap the shit out of Gregory old lame ass. Um, Gregory has a lot of antiquated views when it comes to marriage, especially for him to be a psychiatrist. Mm, he wouldn't be not, not psychiatrist on no goddamn day of the week. So, Quiet is like, motherfucker, you don't keep cheating, do we need to have a conversation? Simone and her friend Contessa show up, who is the new wife on the show. Um, Heavenly greets her really weird by getting down on her name, praising her. And then when the girl looking at her really strange, because this is my first time meeting you and you get down on your knees acting like I'm a countess or whatever. She looking at her like, what the fuck is going on? Heavenly then gets up and say, see, this bitch that fucked up me already. She fucked up me already. Once again, your mouth gonna get your ass something that you can't cash, Heavenly. So everybody's like really weirded out. Like, what the fuck was that shit? And apparently she did that because in the past she has come across rude to other new cast members. But bitches still was rude. Nothing changed. So they start the competition and Jackie don't know how to cut a fucking pepper. And I was like, that's another thing. Say what you want, motherfuckers. You can be a new age woman with jobs and, you know out here in the world and be married. You could be, a, you know, not a stay-at-home mom. But a motherfucker want to come home to a goddamn meal. A man wants to be with a woman that know how to cut something, that know how to make something, bitch. If you got to make the same goddamn meal over once a week, goddamn it. A man want to come home to a fucking meal sometimes. They don't want to have McDonald's or Subway or Chinese food every motherfucking night. A nigga want to know that you made something from love. And a woman wants that too. Don't get it twisted. We as women, I want to come home. My husband got dinner on the table with candles everywhere and rose petals and then draw, drew me a bath. Give and take up in this bitch. And I'm sorry, Jackie, you can be a goddamn, you know, working woman and doing whatever, but you got to know how to be a wife as well and know how to take care of your goddamn husband and vice versa. Men and women have to know how to cater to a goddamn man and a woman. That's just my feelings. Let me know what you feel down below in the comment section. Um, And I'm not asking you for uh, agreeing with me, but agree in a respectful manner. We're going to all respect each other here on the Color Me Pink channel. So, um, where was I at? During the competition, Toy goes over to Contessa and asks her, is she all right? And because how that whole greeting went with Heavenly. And Contessa, you know, asks Heavenly, did she say that she had already fucked up with her? And Heavenly, like, no, I ain't say that. Again. I ain't say that. What the hell? And accused of Toya of instigating a fight. And I was like, no, she didn't instigate. Now, that was in one instance where Toya didn't instigate something. And she was honestly just being a friend. Um, and once again, Heavily was doing the most. Um, and she knew her ass was wrong. 
Simone says that Cecil can be very nasty to her. And she, at one point, starts gushing all over Damon in front of Cecil, who was not paying her no attention. And if he was, he just wasn't going to let her know that she was getting to him. But everybody like, what the fuck is she on? And she talking about how Damon is such a good husband. And, you know, the only reason why she basically like heavily is because of her husband. And then at some point she breaks down and cries. He see her, Cecil sees her crying, does not come over there to, you know, to comfort her or anything. Um, and Heavenly tells her that, you know, Cecil was a good man and, you know, they need to work this shit out. Simone and Jackie go to talk and she says that Cecil feels like all their marital problems are hers and that he doesn't take responsibility for his part. Jackie tells her to stop focusing on him and to work on herself and everything will fall into place. And I 100% agree with Jackie because in relationships, you can't change nobody. They have to want to change themselves. And the only thing you can do is work on the things that you need to work on for yourself in a relationship in order to make it better. And if you see that after everything that you've done to improve yourself as a woman, as a spouse, as a friend, as a mother, as a helpmate, hasn't changed and hasn't made the relationship better and that motherfucker ain't met you and done the things for himself that he needs to do, then it ain't your fault. You've done what you need to do. And at that point, you need to take assessment of the relationship and decide either you're going to stick it out or you're going to move the fuck on. Um, and at the end of the episode, Quad Team won the competition. Let me know what y'all thought about um episode two of Married to Medicine down below in the comment section about everybody marriages being fucked up <laughs> except for heavenly and daddy. <laughs> Make sure to thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. I love you guys and I will see you later for my love and hip hop New York review. Bye.